The fretboard is created. The binding strips are created. And essentially what has happened is that now pushed, made the width of the fretboard wide enough that I can extend over the, the end of the neck blank. And that is, that is important. In this video, I am now going to glue the fretboard on, then wait for it to cure, then come back, cut the fret slots after, after making sure that the fretboard is in the correct place. If you cut the slots first, uh, you will need to use locating pins and things like that to make sure that there's no slippage, um, etc. At this point, my, my board is longer at the nut end than it needs to be. It's longer at the butt end than it needs to be. I'm sticking with that. And uh, all I need to worry about really is that it is straight and square on the neck blank. Uh, I also don't have handy fret slots in, in through which to drill a locating pin hole. So basically, as long as it's nice and square and roughly in the correct place, uh, that's all I'm really worried about at this point. Uh, I am going to find a pencil. I don't have one in my pocket, which is weird. I feel naked. I'm going to mark where my nut is uh, on the side of the neck, so I'll be able to see that. And uh, I'd also need to just tidy up that, that butt end there isn't quite uh, tight enough yet. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna sort that out before we get gluing. Hmm. Chisel. Chisel or low angle block plane? Low angle block plane. Here's a trick. Here's a trick for uh, for planing or chiseling end grain. First of all, you want to slice it. So essentially going in at an angle is rather important. Uh, if you take a micro bevel off the edge, that makes it easier. Having a low angle works better. So slicing low is the effective angle of the blade for one. Uh, you've already got a low angle plane, but also damp down the grain. And it's just surface deep, but it makes the whole thing much easier. Okay, some masking tape. I don't want glue to get in the, uh, I don't want get glue to get into to the truss rod. I forgot what the truss rod was called there. I also don't want the truss rod to rattle, so I'm rolling up a little piece of uh, masking tape just to sit on top of the truss rod in the slot in a few places. So I'm rolling it up with the sticky side out, which helps it stay in place. And that'll pretty much do it. I'm not sure how necessary this is, but I've been doing it my entire career, so, so there we go. So here's my nut. I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna put a pencil line and some masking tape there. Now the masking tape will fold over at an angle and not get in the way, but is also much more visible much more visible than a pencil line. Uh, so there we go. Yeah, that doesn't cause any issues. Visually, it's slightly confusing because I've got maple and then the rosewood here. That's, uh, that's all right. Now the main issue is, is this going to slip and slide as I do this? Um, 
I could potentially glue a tiny strip of uh, just a sacrificial something there, but as you get that off, you might chip away the neck blank. I'm just gonna wing this really. Clean that up a bit. I always put too much on. All right, so we've got a flat fretboard. I could just clamp straight on with these clamps. I do want to call though, because uh, that's better. So I could use these, or even just a little fretboard blank to, uh, or template at least. I am going to use these though, because it gives me better, a better idea of where the fretboard actually is. Spot on, okay. So I've just checked that with the actual binding that's going in place. Now, as long as it doesn't move as I, ooh, did a little bit, as I tighten these up, we're fine. Mm. That one is pulling to the side. we go. All done. So uh, yeah, I probably could have used uh, locating pins of some sort, uh, even invisible ones that you don't have to drill all the way through the fretboard, but uh, this worked all right. I am going to finish filming and then just go back and treble check using the end of the uh, binding that's actually going in place. But that is uh, pretty much there. Woohoo. The complication is is doing things to my brain at this point. Uh, but at least I'm not sanding. So, the fretboard has been glued on. The one thing I did after filming had stopped is uh, I went through and cleaned off most of the excess glue. Or at least, shall I say, that's, that's, that's quite fun. Uh, at least, shall I say, uh, I cleaned off as much as I could access. So, a couple of little aluminium clamping cores. That was a nasty noise and I apologize profusely. It's still ringing away, that's awesome. So I got most of the glue, come here, most of the glue in these slots has been removed. Doing this after it's dried, obviously you missed a bit there, after it's dried, it's an absolute nightmare. So what we need to do now is cut the fretboard off there. The other end doesn't matter for now, although I am going to be adding binding there at some point. We are going to radius it, because at the moment, it is a little bit flat. And in this video, radius, cut fret slots, at least. I went in and marked my nut line with masking tape. Radiusing. We have several options. My favorite. My favorite is a well set up and sharp. Number seven. 
My least favourite is a radius block. But uh, a combination of the two is pretty damn good. Now, it really doesn't matter what radius I choose on this thing in the slightest. Uh, it's going to be 12 inches because, you know, why not? Uh, radius gauges are required. Currently flat. Got a little bit of material to remove. So what we have, 12 inch radius here, and it very slowly flattens out to probably a 14 or so down here. So this is uh, pretty much what I thought would happen with uh, the quilted Sapili we have some light tear out. It is nowhere near as bad as I thought it was gonna be though. So, uh, radius box is gonna get rid of that. Okay, now I have got uh, the radius even all the way along. The, the way your body moves as you're pushing tends to create some instability. One way to get rid of that is to use a longer beam bolted down to a bench and push the, uh, push the neck through. Uh, and the other is to use a radius block. What? That is a radius block. I meant a leveling beam. Okay, so I've got a slight twist taken off just a, a fraction more on this uh, near left corner than I wanted to. I still have some material that I need to get rid of at the front to get rid of the, uh, the tear out. So essentially I'm using a longer, a longer tool going on the existing radius that I've already got and just tidying it up. And if you stand parallel to the center line, you're gonna keep that radius even throughout. Get in there. Perfection. Now, at this stage, I could just mark out the frets straight away, but uh, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite tools, scraper. This is flexible enough to match the radius that we've got. And also, gets us a much nicer finish. much faster. In fact, this one's pretty blunt. The time has come for a center line. So mechanical pencil and a good ruler, two or three points just to make sure. And this is where we find out just how accurate that was, because that, <laughs> that looks off to me. This is one of my favorite tools that we make. Line it up the center line, line it up the center line, yeah.
Perfect. Okay, now we have that, we can start marking the frets positions out. So the best thing to do is grab yourself a scale rule, double check that you're on the right scale, 2475 on this one, that, line it up on your, well, actually there's two, there's two ways. You can either line this up on your center line and mark everything and then go through with a protractor or mark along a given line on both sides and then you just join the two marks. Uh, I'm going to go with the protractor because I really enjoy using this protractor. Just hold that in place with a couple of pieces of tape. Double check and off we go. Take your uh, fret marking rule and double check that everything lines up at both ends of the fretboard. At this stage, it is now just, just cut the fret slots out really. So I'm gonna mark each of those lines with a scalpel blade. That gives the saw something to grab onto. People will question why I did not cut the slots while the fretboard was square. It's easier to cut on a radius, period. The saw is grabbing less wood and it's less likely to bind, it's less likely to go off uh, piste, as it were. So we're absolutely convinced that the slot's in the right place, the mark's in the right place, and it's just a question now of uh, using a ruler to guide our blade. Don't let your uh, thumb go over the edge of the, the ruler. Just, I don't know, thought I should mention it. No reason, really. So this stage, frets on. This is not a uh, worrying job in the slightest. This is a scary job, even if you've done hundreds of them. Okay, so I have my, uh, my scalpel cut. That makes this easier. Uh, line up the blade. Use your fingers. Oh, jump in the gun. Depth stop. Just a piece of, uh, just a piece of masking tape. Will do. So that acts as the depth stop. I don't want to go any further than that. Line the saw up on your cut. Put your fingers there to act as a stop. And you're away. Once you've got an initial cut started. You're away. Like so. Now, it's so long since I've done this that I've forgotten. I prefer my depth stop on the other side of the saw.
nerve wracking. Now the problem is I can't cut this off here. Oh no, wait. What am I doing? I can, I can make that cut because I'm only going part way through there. But I'm going to have to clean up the rest, get the rest of the end of this off uh, using a different saw. Basically. Ah, what am I doing? So what I've got to do, I want to put a mitered piece of inlay in here. Uh, I'm going to cut this off all the way flush, and then I'm going to put a piece of the of the purfling in there. Probably just rebate it in a little bit. Uh, the alternative would have been to cut all of that away with a, a, a coping saw or some coping saw, an inlay saw. There we go, coming together. Now obviously this is only, uh, this is only part of it. We have that sort of thing going on as well. It's gonna be amazing. Thank you for watching, thank you for being amazing. Uh, in the next video, well, I'm gonna have to glue some extra binding on and uh, sand a fretboard and afraid of Redboard. <laughs> I love my life. Oh yeah.